Hello and welcome to another short form little history story video. Much as with the last one, this will be covering an officer from World War II, though this time someone rather more famous who will eventually get his own long form video as well. Because you can't really talk about World War II in the Pacific without covering Izoroku Yamamoto. This one, in contrast to the future long-form one, will be focused entirely on the Pearl Harbor attack and Yamamoto's relation thereof, because there are quite a few very pervasive myths about him and Pearl Harbor in popular culture, and I like busting those myths because they just hang around all over the place. Now, I'm sure most people who have read up on the Pearl Harbor attack or Yamamoto himself already know that most of these myths are, well, myths, but it's popular enough that I feel a lot of people don't know that. And these videos aren't just for history nerds, they're also for general audience as much as anything else. So, moving into that, one of the big ones, definitely, is people thinking Japan attacked Pearl Harbor, even though Yamamoto didn't want to. There's that famous quote of his, the, you know, sleeping giant quote, the awaken, the sleeping giant, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, the thing about that is that quote is very fake. It's, it comes from Tora Tora Tora, which is an otherwise excellent movie. Watch that one. Don't watch the Pearl Harbor movie. But no one has ever been able to come up with the diary entry or journal entry or whatever they're claiming it is that week that supposedly has this quote from him. No one has ever found it, so the most logical answer is, it's fake, it was made up, and they don't want to admit to it. It might be out there somewhere, but no one's been able to find it, so for now, consider the Sleeping Giant quote as a myth, it's fake, sounds good, makes good filmmaking, not something Yamamoto actually said. And the reason why you can do that and assume it's fake is because the idea that Yamamoto didn't want the attack is definitely fake. Yamamoto is the one who planned the attack on Pearl Harbor. Admittedly, there is some evidence it was with the understanding that Japan could never beat America straight up, and that he hoped the best they could do was a quick blow to cripple the Navy and run wild for a while. But most of the Japanese high command did not want to do the attack. They realized it was a very bad idea. Now, that was mostly because they thought it was a dumb idea in general, not because they didn't think attacking America was a good idea. Because they didn't like the attack, Yamamoto had to threaten to retire at multiple points to force them to let him do the attack. The man is not innocent here. He forced it on the Japanese Navy. So if you ever hear someone say, Yamamoto didn't want to do the attack, he was forced into it. They've got it backwards. He's the one who forced the attack, not the other way around. Moving on from that, the thing of that Pearl Harbor attack is Yamamoto thought there would be advance warning. He wanted to attack only after a note was delivered to American government, which would make it a not-so-surprise attack. Or so he says, but the thing of it is, that note did not break off diplomatic relations, it definitely didn't declare war, and it was only supposed to be delivered 30 minutes before the attack. So basically, you have Yamamoto trying to justify the attack by, oh, we gave him a note 30 minutes before we did it, while ignoring that the note didn't actually imply an attack of any sort. And that's 30 minutes in the 1940s to somehow get word from Washington to Hawaii, when it's not obvious there's going to be attack anywhere, let alone Pearl Harbor, when everyone expects the attack to be in the Philippines. So Yamamoto there... Yeah, he can say that's what he wanted to do, but it wouldn't have changed anything. It still would have been a surprise attack on a fleet at peace. And we all know how that went. There is some evidence after the attack, Yamamoto was a bit depressive at the realization of what it meant. Even so, the responsibility is still at his feet. He crippled the battleship fleet, did some damage to lighter warships, in exchange for missing the carriers, and boy were they going to regret missing those carriers and making the United States about as angry as it was physically possible to make them. There is some argument that if Japan had declared war in the traditional sense, attacked the Philippines first, so on and so forth, they might have not made America quite as mad, and maybe that's true to start, 
But Imperial Japan in World War II was quite happy to commit every imaginable war crime, up to and including ritual cannibalism. That's a fun story. And this would probably have had the same effect as Pearl Harbor, if in a slower progression. Japan's war crimes is a topic for a different video, though, so I'm not going to go into too much detail here. This is, after all, just a quick little background on the Pearl Harbor attack and Yamamoto's involvement in it. Just a short little story to bust a couple myths. We'll get a detailed video on Yamamoto and a detailed video on the attack of Pearl Harbor at a later date. Thank you for watching this short little video, and I hope to see you in the next one.